Thank you, my sisters. Um, once again, my name is Dominic. It is always a pleasure and a privilege to talk to my brothers and sisters about the word of the Most High. Now, most of us uh, grew up Christians, if you are living in the United States or in the islands, and one of the verses that creates a lot of problems within the Christian community for our brothers and sisters, the Israelites, is the verse that's to be found in John chapter 14. And that verse we are going to read and we will consider what the Father is actually telling us. And then we will see if we can back it up with the word of the Father himself so that we can have a much better understanding than we do now. Let's go straight to the verse. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in the mighty one, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And so right here, we read clearly in verse 2, I go to prepare a place for you. In verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And so, in church, we are taught that the Messiah is going to prepare a place in heaven for us. And then we are told, where is the Father? We are asked the question, for those of us who might have objections, uh, we are asked, where is the Father? And then the usual response is, he is in heaven. Well, the Son is going to meet the Father in heaven, so therefore, he is going to be in heaven, and where he is in heaven, there we may be also. But that is not actually the case. That is not what is being said at all. Notice in the verse, you do not hear the word heaven at all in this entire passage. You do not hear the word heaven. Instead, what you hear is that I am going to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. And so, we have to figure out where that place is. The answer is pretty straightforward. We can jump straight to Revelations 21, verse, verses 1 to 3, and the answer is right there. Let's do that. Revelation 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the mighty one out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the mighty one is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the mighty one himself shall be with them, and be their mighty one. Notice in verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. 
from the mighty one out of heaven. And so the city, New Jerusalem, came out of heaven. We read, prepared as a bride. It came out of heaven already prepared. And so the Messiah went to prepare alongside the Father, New Jerusalem. He went to prepare New Jerusalem. But notice that New Jerusalem came out of heaven. And it lands right here on earth. And so, where we read before that the Messiah is going to prepare a place for you, we now understand that the place that he is going to prepare is New Jerusalem. And that place is coming out of heaven. And it shall land and it shall be established right here on earth. Now, that's the, the quick answer. But let's run through a couple of verses so that we can confirm this. Let's begin with Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus saith the Father that created the heavens, the Mighty One Himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Father and there is none else. And so we just read that the Father formed the earth. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. He created the earth for it to be inhabited. He did not create it simply to cast it away, simply to eliminate it and to have man now live in heaven. No. Let's read Psalms 115, verse 16. Psalms 115, verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Father's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The heaven, the heavens belong to the Father. The heavens are not a place for man. It belongs to the Father because we read, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Heaven belongs to the Father. What belongs to man is the earth. Let's go to Genesis 6, verses 5 through 8. And the mighty one saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the father that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the father said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the father. We just read that the father created the earth and he created man and placed man on the earth. But because man is so evil, because we do all of the wickedness that comes to our head, the father made a decision to get rid of man. But the father is a just and merciful creator. He decided not to get rid of every man, but the men who continually do evil, the men who continue to live in disobedience, the men who steal the land and the resources of others, the men who shed their brother's blood, those are the men, the wicked men, 
that the father determined to get rid of. That's why we read again in verse 6, And it repented the father that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, let's go to Psalms 37 verse 18. The father knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Noah, the father determined, was upright. He was righteous. We read in Psalms 37 verse 29, The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. And so when the father decided to rid the earth of the evil men, at that point, he also decided that the righteous shall inherit the earth, that the righteous shall live on the land forever and ever. Matthew 5 verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Again, the earth is for the righteous. The earth is for the humble. It is for the meek. It is not for the arrogant and the brutish and the idolaters and those who shed blood and take from others and commit adultery and lie with mankind. No, the earth are for the obedient, humble, righteous, meek children of the Father. We read in Job 9 verse 24, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This happened because of our disobedience. We have been disobedient to the Father since Adam. Because of that, we have allowed ourselves to fall into the hands of the wicked. But the Father did not create the earth to be inhabited by wicked men. The righteous shall inherit the earth. The wicked shall be cut off. Matthew 24 verse 37. This is the Messiah talking. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Basically, the Messiah is telling us the Father had to get rid of the evil men from off the face of the earth before so that the righteous may live in safety. This is what will happen in the last days. Again, just as it was in the days of Noah, the Father will come with fury, with power, with a flood, and he shall cleanse the land of the evil ones who are on the face of the earth, and he will allow the meek and the righteous to dwell on the earth safely. Psalms 37 verse 22 For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off If you are righteous if you are obedient to the will of the creator then he will bless you and you will inherit the earth. But if you are evil and do wickedness, then he will curse you and you shall be cut off. Notice that the father says, the blessed shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. The righteous shall inherit the earth. Nowhere in the Bible do you read 
that the meek, the righteous, and the just shall inherit heaven. Heaven belongs to the Father, but the earth he has given to man. Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 through 9. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the father's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. What did we just read? The father is telling us that from the very beginning, when he set out to determine which nations he was going to establish on what land, he set the boundaries of those people in their nations in accordance with the number of the children of Israel. What that means is that he took out the fat part of the earth, the land of milk and honey. He took out the best part for Israel first. He decided how many children Israel would have. And then he said, this is how much land they will need. And this is the land that I will give to them. Now that he has given out Israel's portion on the earth, he decides where shall he put the Egyptians? Where shall he put the Ethiopians? Where shall he put the Edomites? Where shall he put the Canaanites? Where shall he put Europe? Where shall he put England, France, China, Russia, and all the other nations that are on the face of the earth? He first determined where shall Israel dwell? We read in verse nine, for the, for the father's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Why do we read that? Because all of the earth belongs to the father. But he has claimed Israel for himself to be a people set apart for him. A special nation of priests. And so we read that the father's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Hebrew 11 verses 8 through 10. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is the mighty one. Verse 16, but now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, wherefore the mighty one is not ashamed to be called their mighty one, for he hath prepared for them a city. This is the city that we read about in John. We just read that Abraham is to receive an inheritance. The covenant that the father made with Abraham was that he will give him a land and a kingdom that will never end. That land, that kingdom is to be inherited by Israel. Israel is to be the nation with whom he is to establish his kingdom here on earth. And so that inheritance that the father gave to Abraham 
Isaac and Jacob were heirs with him. That means that they inherited that inheritance as well. And when each of them died, that became a part of their will and testament. In verse 16, we read that the land that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived in had earthly foundations. But the land that they were looking for is to have heavenly foundations. Foundations that were prepared and laid by the Father himself. We read, but now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Wherefore the Father is not ashamed to be called their mighty one. For he hath prepared for them a city. And so the Father himself now is going to prepare a place for his children, Israel, a city for Israel to live in. For, um, and that city, we learn, is New Jerusalem, Mount Zion. Why do we read, but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly? It is a heavenly city. Because the Father himself will dwell in that city. It is a heavenly city because it will be high. One of the definitions of the words of the word heaven is to be in the heights, is to be high. And so that city is to be the highest city on earth. Not necessarily physically higher, but higher in grace, higher in blessings, higher spiritually, higher because it is there that the kingdom of, of Israel will be ruled from, higher because it is from that city that the entire world will be ruled from as well. That city is where our father will be where he will dwell among men. Where the Father is, his habitation is called heaven. And so, when we read that they desire a heavenly country, Abraham and our forefathers knew that they would come when he would come to earth to live among men. And they knew that preparations for that city would have to be made by the Father himself and by his anointed, the Messiah himself as well. And so the Messiah, even as we speak, is making preparations uh, at the side, at the right hand of the Father, making preparations for the land that is to be on earth the land that is already on earth. They are making preparations for that place to be prepared to receive the children of Israel and also for that place to be, re to be prepared to receive the house of the Father, the tabernacle of the Father himself here on earth. Again, we read, but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, the mighty one is not ashamed to be called their mighty one, for he hath prepared for them a city. A city. Not heaven, but a city. A city here on earth. Isaiah 65, verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. That city where the Father will be, we know that the Father refers to his city as his holy mountain. And we see the word mountain used throughout the Bible. 
when you hear the mountain, say the mountain of the United States, the mount of America is New York and Washington, D.C. Those are the two main mountains of the United States. It is from those two cities that the United States is governed. And likewise, our father calls the city that governs Israel his mountain, and he named it Mount Zion. And we just read that his elect, the elect of the Holy One of Israel shall inherit his mountain. Who are his elect? The children of Israel who are obedient to his will. Isaiah 49, verse 8. The Father is talking to the Messiah. And he says, Thus saith the Father, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Again, here the Father is talking to the Messiah, and he is talking to his children, to his people. The Father is talking to Israel. In Isaiah 49, verse 8, Thus saith the Father, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. What is the father saying? Well, the father is saying that he will use Israel and the Messiah to establish the earth. He is not getting rid of the earth. The earth shall be established forever and ever and ever. Exodus 15, verses 16 through 18. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone, till thy people pass over. O Father, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased, thou shalt bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Father, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Father, which thy hands have established. The Father shall reign forever and ever. And again, we see that the Father is going to bring Israel to his holy mountain, to Mount Zion, in the place of his sanctuary, the city that he himself shall establish with his own hands. And how will he establish it in his, with his own hands? Spiritually first. He will cleanse the land and he will work with the people to open their hearts and their minds for them to be able to receive and obey his commandments. And by cleansing the land and by writing his commandments in the hearts of the people, he would have established that place as a place that he can now come and dwell in and live among men forever. Jeremiah 3, verse 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Again, we are not going to inherit heaven. We are going to inherit land here on earth. This brings us once again to Revelations chapter 21. Now we can understand when we read, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, 
for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right here in verse 1, let us be clear. The earth as we know it is not going to disintegrate and then be reformed physically. No. What the Father is telling us is that the earth will be cleansed and that there will be a new government to rule the earth. And that government is his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth. And when that day comes, yes, we will be living in a new earth. Verse 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the mighty one, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. New Jerusalem is coming. We are not going, it is coming, and it will be already prepared. Why? Because the Father is going to make all the necessary arrangements for that physical land that is here on earth to be in a position to accept the 12 tribes, to accept the children of Israel so that we can gather in the great congregation before the Father. So that preparation is being made most likely even as we speak the father is working the messiah is working and the father is preparing the land getting it ready to receive the children of israel verse 3 and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of the mighty one is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the mighty one himself shall be with them and be their mighty one the father is coming right here to earth ezekiel 43 verses 4 through 10 in fact, the last eight chapters of Ezekiel talks about the new kingdom of the Father here on earth. It talks about New Jerusalem. It talks about the tabernacle, the house of the mighty one. It talks about the 12 tribes being here on earth. It talks about the fact that there will be other nations who will be occupying the other lands here on earth. It's good for us to read all eight chapters, but today we'll go just to Ezekiel 43, verses 4 through 10. And the glory of the Father came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Father filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. And the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredoms, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places, in their setting of their threshold by my threshold, and their post by my post, and the wall between me and them. They have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in mine anger. Now, let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou, son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure 
the pattern. We read in Ezekiel that the father showed the prophet his house, where his throne will be, where he will set the soles of his feet. Our father will be here on earth. We are not going up to heaven. He is coming down to us. Isaiah 60 verse 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Our Father is telling us that the people, Israel, will inherit the land forever. Not heaven, but the land. Ezekiel 22, verse 16. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. And thou shalt know that I am the mighty one. So the father is telling Israel to take your inheritance in the sight of the heathen. If this inheritance is in heaven, how can the heathen be in heaven watching us take our inheritance? That is not possible in heaven. That's because the inheritance is land and we will inherit the land that the Father has set aside for us from creation in the sight of all the heathen. Ezekiel 47, verse 13. Thus saith the mighty Father, This shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions. The Father is giving out the land. And the same way that we read Back in Deuteronomy 32, where, where we read, when the father separated the land amongst the children of Adam, he separated the children of Adam. He did not say, let us all be one. And even so, likewise, in the end, he will separate the, the 12 tribes into their lands and of course, we know that the 12 tribes all came from Israel. But this is when he will say, Simeon, this is your portion. Judah, this is your portion. Joseph, you shall have two. Levi, you shall have none. But you will have cities in the lands of the territories of your brothers. Ezekiel 47 verse 14, and ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning the which I lifted up mine hand to give it unto your fathers. And this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. So when the father dishes out, when the father gives each of the tribes their portion of land, he will say, you will inherit it. And this is the land that I lifted up my hand to give it unto your fathers. This is the promised land. This is the land that the creator promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that their children would inherit forever. This is the fulfillment of that prophecy. And again, that promise was of land here on earth. Isaiah 2 verses 2 and 3. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain 
of the Father's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Again, all nations shall flow unto it. Let's read it all again. And it shall come to pass in the last days, in the last days, that the mountain of the Father's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. So in the last days, the Father's dwelling place, his habitation, his tabernacle, his house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Remember that the Father's house, we read, shall be in the midst of the children of Israel. And so the nations that will flow unto it are the other nations. Ethiopia, Egypt, Europe, and the other nations that are here on this earth who are not nations of Israel, who are not the children of Israel, they will flow unto it as well. Verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Father, to the house of the mighty one of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Father from Jerusalem. Verse 3 tells us that these nations who are not the children of Israel, they will have to go to Jerusalem, to Zion, to learn the ways of the Father. That means there still will be wicked people here on earth. And these wicked people will have to make a decision. They will learn the ways of the Father. They will learn his laws and his commandments that they may live or they will die. They will be cut off from this earth forever. And so we just read in verse 3 that many nations shall go to Jerusalem. Now, the house of the Father will be there. The Father will be there. This tells us that Jerusalem is going to be here on earth. The Father is not going to entertain wicked people from wicked nations up in heaven, no. Everything is, gonna, is going to take place right here on earth. And let's finish off with Luke 11 verse 2. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven so in earth. The kingdom is common. The Father's will that he wills in heaven will be manifested on the earth as well. New Jerusalem is coming out of heaven and it will be established right here on earth and the earth will be established with the children of Israel, with the meek and the righteous forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. To recap, when we read in John 14 verses 2 and 3, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. We now understand this verse a little bit better. We understand from Hebrew chapter 11, verses 8 and 9, that today all of Israel 
are like sojourners in the earth, as if we all lived in a strange country, living as it were in tents. We now understand that we are to look for a better country, a better city. Hebrew 11 verse 10, For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is the mighty one. In Hebrew 11 verse 16, But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, wherefore the mighty one is not ashamed to be called their mighty one, for he hath prepared for them a city. This country, this city, is being prepared by the Father and His Son in heavenly places. Once prepared, we know where it will end up. Revelations 21 verse 2 And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the mighty one out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the mighty one is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the mighty one himself shall be with them, and be their mighty one. New Jerusalem, the city, Mount Zion, the place that the Father and the Son prepared is coming down to the earth. The Father is coming down with it. That is where the Father will be, and that is where the Son will be. Where we read in John 14 verse 3, when the Messiah said, where I am, there you may be also, we now understand that the Messiah will be in New Jerusalem, in Zion, here on earth, and we can expect to be with him in Zion as well, here on earth. Isaiah 2, verse 2, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Father's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Father, to the house of the mighty one of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Father from Jerusalem. That city here on earth. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And to that, hallelujah. You can visit us at Voix Israel on Facebook, that's V-W-A-I-Z-R-A-Y-E-L, Voix Israel on Facebook. You may also call us at 646-425-0923, 646-425-0923.